The deal to get these hostages free has been extremely tenuous, NBC News's correspondent Anna Schechter writes, quote, took weeks of secret negotiations involving U.S., Israeli, Qatari, and Egyptian officials, the heads of the CIA and the Mossad, and the personal intervention of President Joe Biden to convince a reluctant Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, to accept the four-day ceasefire that is expected to free 50 hostages from Hamas. To elaborate on this, Anna joins us now. We have two colleagues on that byline. Really fantastic reporting. How did the initial deal come together? Alicia, it's really like a spy novel, except I don't want to say that because of the gravity mm -hmm. for these families who've had this excruciating weeks-long wait. But you had CIA Director Burns, who was extremely involved. Without him, this wouldn't have happened. Working with Mossad head David Barnea and President Joe Biden, sometimes on a daily basis, calling Benjamin Netanyahu during a five-day period almost every day, every other day at a critical time in late October when the architecture of the deal was coming together. And without Joe Biden's pressure, I don't think this would have happened because on the Israeli side, Bibi Netanyahu does not want to give a millimeter to Hamas. There is no trust there. And so he was reluctant to come to any kind of a deal. And in fact, senior U.S. officials told us that in the early days, right after the October 7th attack, Qatar immediately got involved with the U.S. saying, let's get together, let's orchestrate a deal, let's get these hostages out. And the Israelis just weren't ready to talk at that point. Once Israel started to gain control militarily of northern Gaza, that's when they started to be more flexible and willing to negotiate. So it was late October and early November that things really started to come together. And so for these families, they were not kept 100 percent in the loop, but some of them were talking to, if they were dual nationals, for example, ambassadors in Germany uh, and learning something here and there, traveling to various countries, trying to pressure the EU to put pressure um, on Hamas. And so there were fits and starts and days of momentum and setbacks throughout this excruciating weeks-long process. To put just a fine point on what you just detailed, a senior Israeli official told you this was, quote, a Biden deal, not a Netanyahu deal. I wonder, sort of watching what has transpired in the past four hours, it's easy to say these deals are very tenuous, it's very fluid. We have watched today just how tenuous, just how fluid it is. What would your reporting tell you about about what, what in the initial negotiations could have foreshadowed what we saw today? Well, it, the uh, tenuous nature that we saw today just shows how incredibly crucial Qatar has been yes. to making this possible and their pressure on Hamas, because Hamas was saying today, well, wait a minute, Israel didn't abide by the certain, the letter of the law that we had all agreed to. And without Qatari pressure and some pressure from Egypt, and that went all the way up to President Sisi, and we're talking about all the way up to the Emir of Qatar. So we have very senior people in directly involved with this. But I would say that early on, um, the architecture had been in place for several weeks, but my reporting indicates that President Biden just a few days ago, within the last week, went to Bibi Netanyahu and said, five day ceasefire. Netanyahu said four day ceasefire. And that's how we landed on this four day ceasefire with 50 women and children. However, throughout my reporting indicates that Israel was always hung up on all the women and children. That was kind of their sticking point. Let's get the women and children out. Your sense, I mean, one of the things that we're reporting on tonight is there were not U U.S. citizens among those released. The extent to which the White House is putting pressure on making sure that there are American citizens released, the way in which that is factoring into these negotiations? Well, look at the power that Hamas holds. So the longer that they hold the American hostages, they really have the upper hand because President Joe Biden has a lot of influence, a lot of sway. He's personally invested, but clearly- With Netanyahu was... specifically? Yes, with Netanyahu specifically. If you think about the allyship that goes back decades and how important 
U.S. support for Israel is. Um, these two countries are 100 percent aligned in, publicly facing. Behind the scenes, there have been some disputes among, you know, senior leadership working on this. There have been disagreements. Um, the Americans have not been happy with um, the idea, for example, early on, Israel was public about laying a siege on Gaza. And, it, and the Americans were saying, wait a minute, we're not OK with that. You need to create humanitarian corridors. You need to create pauses so that people can get from North Gaza to South Gaza. All that pressure has had an impact. You have to understand that from the Israelis' perspective, after October 7th, they were so shocked, and it was such a trauma that for them and for the Israeli public, the voting public, and Netanyahu is always keenly aware he is a political operator. And so he, from his perspective, he wanted to just appear strong, not give an inch. And even to this day, he probably is not really happy about this deal that does give some leverage to Hamas.